Well, good morning, First Baptist Church. Good morning. Welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. That's, he's the only reason for coming here on a Sunday morning would be to worship him. Um, we'd also like to welcome the folks that are watching online. We're glad you've come to, to watch as well. And we're just going to have a really good time in the Lord this morning. And we're going to have start with some, I'm just going to mention about four announcements. Uh, I just want to remind you about the one great hour of sharing offering that we're taking this month. Uh, there, were out, uh, there were envelopes in the, in the uh, uh, bulletin last week. There's probably some in your pew this week uh, to use for that purpose. And then also uh, remind you of afternoon connection. Uh, Thursday, July 13th at 3 o'clock um, out at the Woodburns house. And then also remind you of family worship. Our emphasis is for a while is going to be fam family worship. And um, again, after our worship service this morning, yours truly will be handing out the materials for your family worship. And so if you haven't received that, if you haven't picked that up previously, I'd be happy to uh, help you with those materials. Um, and then lastly, uh, I want to remind you of voter registration deadline for the August 8th, 8th uh, election is uh, July 10th. So that's tomorrow. Uh, if you're not registered to vote, we, you need to get out there and get registered so that you can um, vote on August 8th. Um, for a reminder, this is about amending Ohio's Constitution. And we believe that if uh, only a 50% plus one vote, uh, it can change our uh, Constitution. Uh, we believe that it needs to be higher than a 50% plus one. It needs to be a the issue says 60%. I would have liked to have seen it at about 66%, at least, at least two-thirds. But that's, that's not the issue. That's not on the issue. So we need to vote for what we can get, and, and that's 60%. Uh, because the enemy and their minions will try to sneak everything past that they can and get it into our Constitution and make it easier for them to pass legislation that we do not agree with. So uh, we'd love you to vote on on August 8th, I think. There will be, I didn't look this up, maybe some of, somebody here has. Uh, there's going to be early voting, I think. Does anyone know when that starts? What is it? Okay. All right. So we can start voting Tuesday. So get out there and vote. Uh, I don't want to tell you how to vote, but vote, vote yes. <laughs> and um, the, there are lots of, uh, I understand, I'm seeing more and more of the commercials on TV to vote no. Disgusting, you know. Um, seeing more signs in people's yards out there to vote no. Uh, I understand there are people knocking on doors, coming around for you to vote no. Again, I don't want to tell you how to vote. Oh, wait a minute, I already told you. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of that. Um, let's begin our worship time. I want to begin by reading from the Word of God, Psalm 24. It's a psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and pure heart who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. 
he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Let's bow in prayer. Our Father, we, we come into your presence. The, the King of glory, the Lord Almighty. We've come to meet with you. And we are so grateful that you made it possible to, for us to meet with you. Because before you... Before Jesus went to the cross on our behalf, we did not have access to you. We could not come into your presence. We needed a priest, someone to stand between us and you. But the cross tore that veil, and we can come into your presence whenever we have a need or when we simply want to fellowship with you. And this morning, God, we've come into your presence to tell you that we love you and that we do need you in our lives. There are so many things going on in our country and in our world now that it is just unbelievable we could have ever gotten to this point. And the enemy is using every avenue he can to drive this home. But we say to him, not on our watch. We are the church of God, the body of Christ, and we will stand firm against the enemy. Nothing will move us. We are immovable. And we will stand for what is right and pure and righteous. Embolden us, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh God. Because even as strong as we want to be without you, in our own strength, we are really nothing. But in your strength, we can accomplish anything. Because you can. And Father, you're here with us today, and we pray, God, that you would receive our worship our thanksgiving, our praise, and you would hear our voices. You would hear our voices. You would see our hearts. And that you would change us. Change us into the Christian we need to be. Help us as we, pl as we plan our, our home worship times. The enemy is after our families, O oh God. He knows that if he can break down the family, he's got this nation. God, help us. Help us to desire to have these times of worship so, our, so that our families can be as strong as they possibly can be. We love you, Father. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are in our lives our personal Lord, our personal Savior. And I pray, God, if there's someone here this morning that has never received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that today would be that day. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence with us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In a moment, we're going to be singing... Number 262, holy, holy, holy. And I just want to read this section of scripture to you from Revelation chapter 4, beginning in verse 6. In, a cent in the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third 
had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around. Even under his wings, day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let's stand together and sing together to our awesome, holy, holy, holy Lord, our Lord God Almighty, number 262. This works because I woke up with a frog in my throat. <laughs> Oh, this is just what happens to me. 
Excuse me, let us pray and uh, turn our eyes to God. We know that he is going to come and be in our midst. He is already here. Let's pray. Father, we love you so very much. And we want to do everything you want us to do and not do anything you don't want us to do. We thank you for your presence here, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's so enabling for us, Lord, that we'll meet together with you and uh, just to be with you and enjoy uh, that pleasure, but all that you do for us in our families, in our lives, we're just so thankful for you, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that uh, there'd be more people in this world that would come to know you especially in some of our families or friends. And uh, we just ask you to help us to keep praying for them and to keep uh, reminding us, Lord, that they need to know you. So, Father, bless you in, in all that you do for us. Continue to be with us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Please stand. Stay standing as we continue to worship if you're able. Well, I am James 1, James 2 next week. We got about four or five Jameses in here, There's one there, one over there. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, one of the things that we've been doing lately is talking about family worship. And, and Brian has a, 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 a big impact with that, that he thinks that, that we need to go back to not just worshiping here, but worshiping in our family. And uh, subsequently, this, this is a sermon, obviously, I, I'd written uh, uh, part, quite a while ago. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, it kind of fits in. The, the title of it is Entering the Presence of God. Um, <clears throat> And I'm going to start with a few questions until we read some of the word that uh, we, we want to for that. Let me first ask you, who is the most important person you know? You don't have to tell me. I just, you do have someone that's a very, just very personal and you love it. Who is the most wonderful person you know of? Who is the most beautiful person you know of? Look at your wife's quick, guys. Get it done. 
Who is the most compassionate person you know of? James. <laughs> Who is the most loving person you know of? Who is the most forgiving person you know of? Who is the most generous person you know of? And who is the most important person you know of? What if one of these persons called you and said, I am going to be in your area tomorrow. I would like to spend the day with you. What would your response be? Would you be willing to set aside whatever you had scheduled for the day in order to spend the day with that very special person? You know, I'm sure, that the most person in the world is God. God himself. Now what if that special person, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the most wonderful, beautiful, compassionate, loving, forgiving, generous, and, imper and important person in the entire universe is the one who wants to ask you to spend the day with him. What would your response be? Would you be willing to set aside whatever you have scheduled for the day in order to spend the day with him? How important is God to us? Then why don't we take him up on his offer? There may be several reasons. We may be very busy. There might be some special events taking place. Or we might be tied down. But is not your very special person and indeed God himself important enough to set aside what you have planned to do? What would you do if Jesus walked through the door right now? Let's look at the history of the presence of God and his children from the word of God. The title of the sermon here is Entering into the Very Presence of God. And I've broken down into five categories. Begin be the presence of God in the beginning. The presence of God in the creation of mankind. The presence of God in the Garden of Eden the presence of God and life in the Garden of Eden, the presence of God and being banished from the Garden of Eden, and the presence of God and being restored to God's presence. The last one that has five categories that we'll look at, through the cross on which Jesus suffered and died, these are the reasons we are going to be able to come into the presence of God through the blood which he shed on the cross, through his statement, it is finished, when he, which he proclaimed from the cross, through the temple court, curtain that was torn in two when Jesus died on the cross, and the, through the surrender of our lives to Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, and the forgiveness of our sins at the cross. How important is God to you? Is there anything that would hinder you if God called you and said, I'm coming down? Can I, can I meet with you? We could probably say, well, it depends on my circumstances. 
That doesn't work. <laughs> you don't have any circumstances with God. So let's begin at looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, beginning with the presence of God at the very beginning of time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In the beginning, there was only the presence of God. Three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The only divine person in the, in, in, the, in the atmosphere or anywhere else. The only self-existent persons. There was, no, there was no earth. There was nothing else. It was just them. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No one and nothing else. Everything that came into existence was created by the hand of God, including mankind. The presence of God and the creation of mankind. And that's in Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Genesis 1.31, God saw that he, all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. the presence of God in the Garden of Eden. This is in Genesis 2, 8, and 9. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden, with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2, 15 to 18. The Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Up to this point, no death, no sin. Perfect. And then the Lord said, it is good for the man, excuse me, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a, a helper suitable for him. Then Genesis 2, 22 to 25. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones, Flesh of my flesh, and she be, will be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and woman were both naked, but they felt no shame, no sin. 
Adam and Eve had human bodies, but they were alive spiritually also. And thus, they were able to be and live in the very presence of God in the Garden of Eden. Next, we're going to look at the presence of God and life in the Garden of Eden. And that's Genesis 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? It's a trick, isn't it? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. No death yet. The serpent said, you will not surely die. Wow. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the, the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, she also desired it, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves, ultimately to try and protect them from God. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. He had been with him for many days now, walking in the cool of the garden, no problem. And they hid from the Lord among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. When we do things, the, the things that's going to corrupt God, do we hide? Somewhere, somehow, right? The presence of God and being banished from the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3, to 24. And the Lord God said, the man has become like one of us knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever as a sinner. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. God didn't want us to live eternally in sin. He had a plan. When Adam and Eve sinned, they immediately died spiritually and therefore could no longer come into the presence of God. Can you imagine how that must have got a hold of them, knowing that they've been freely in the presence of God and, you know, and nothing bad, nothing wrong is happening, it's wonderful. How many of you 
have been in the presence of God. Isn't it a wonderful thing to even believe that we're in the presence of God? I can't imagine what they must have felt at that moment. Maybe never knowing I'll never be able to see God again. Their creator. The next element we'll look at is the presence of God and being restored to God's presence. How, has man, how was mankind to be restored to the presence of God? What could we do? We couldn't do anything. God provided a way to be restored in the presence of God through the sacrifice of his son Jesus on the cross. How good is God? Wow. And now we are able to once again come into the very presence of God. How many of you are thankful that we're able to come into the very presence of God? I mean, you know, sometimes I just feel, oh, I'm a you know, I'm a sinner in, in different ways. Like, and he's perfect. And he's holy and he's loving. And, you know, it's like, how do I handle somebody like that? Just sit down and love him and he just loves you. The first way we come into the presence of God is through the cross on which Jesus suffered and died. John 19, 17, and 18. Carrying his own cross... He went out to the place of the skull, which is, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him. And with him, two others, one on one side and Jesus in the middle. Father was willing he, to, 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 to repair what we had done by sacrificing his son, his perfect son. Now, we hear that, we know that, but do we really understand that? I don't. I, I mean, it's like, you know, I think I know, even myself, I, I, I wouldn't sacrifice any of my children for anybody. I don't care who you are. <laughs> it's like, but, but God is not us. <laughs> the most perfect person in the world was Jesus. And he says, okay, I love you guys enough, I'm going to... Let my son go to the cross. It's amazing how much God loves us. Through the cross in which he suffered and died, through the blood which Jesus shed on the cross. That's John 19, 33 to 34. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. He was still on the cross. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. That divine blood is what saves us. Divine blood. Jesus is the only human being that had divine blood. Jesus was the only person that ever lived a human life that was not sinful at all. Never once because of his divinity and his divine blood. Through the cross on which Jesus, the, the reason we have access is through the cross on which Jesus suffered and died, through the blood which Jesus shed on the cross, and through the statement in John 19, 28 to 30, it is finished. He completed what God sent him to do, shed his blood on the cross, died on the cross, the only, to do the only thing that would ever be able to reconcile his people. There's nothing else. No one else. Later, knowing that all was now completed and so the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of Hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, 
it is finished. There is not a thing any human being did or could have done. But Jesus did what the only person could do, the divine person. It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What amazing. Then, uh, nextly, the next reason we can enter the, the presence of God is the temple curtain, which was torn in two when Jesus died on the cross. In, in the Jewish temple, the only people who could go into that last room there were, were pastors or, you know, and uh, no people. When Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Wow. At that moment, the curtain uh, uh, of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom to give us access. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. The tabernacle represented the very presence of God. The curtain represented the separation of the presence of God from sinful human beings. No one could go in. When Jesus died on the cross, the curtain, which represented the barrier between the physical and spiritual world, was destroyed, and access to the presence of God was restored to those who were alive spiritually through Jesus. For us, there is one more step that must be completed before we can enter the very presence of God. And that's through the surrender of our life to Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior and the forgiveness of our sins at the cross. <coughs> when Moses <coughs> had been talking to God, and he wanted to see God face to face. What did God say? You cannot see my face. If you see it, you will die. Only those who have accepted Jesus Christ, Jesus has opened up the way for us to come into the very presence of the living God. The door is open. But there is one very significant step that we have to complete before we can enter the presence of God. Our spirits must be alive. Wow. We must be born again by the Holy Spirit in order for our spirit to be alive and in order for us to come into the very presence of God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Our spirits are brought to life by accepting what Jesus did for us on the cross and by making him our personal Lord and Savior and receiving the Holy Spirit through whom we are born again. So we enter into the presence of God through the cross on which Jesus, Jesus suffered and died. Through his statement, it is finished, which Jesus uttered from the cross, through the blood which Jesus shed on the cross, through the temple curtain that was torn in two when Jesus died on the cross, and the surrender of our lives to Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, and the forgiveness of our sins at the cross. 
The first four requirements were completed by Jesus at the cross. The final requirement must be completed by us, by accepting Jesus and all he has done for us at the cross. Where do you stand? Have you met Jesus at the cross? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you been born again through the Holy Spirit? If you have, then God awaits for you to come into his very presence with open arms. God is our Father. He loves us just like we love our children. He always wants to spend time with his children. Since Jesus redeemed us, he invites us freely and frequently to come in and stay in his presence. How could there be a better invitation than God's invitation to spend time in his presence? I have been in the ministry, I think it was 36 years or something, you know, and, and I, I came to accept Jesus when I was 15 and, you know, and a lot of years between in that. And it was just recently that God, you know, recently, a number of years, but um, that I, I, I became... I, to understand what it meant to be in the presence of God. And uh, now, in one, one thing I, I have, uh, God gave me a booklet that he had provided for me uh, that, that I use every day uh, uh, that mostly is the word of God. And um, usually... I get up at quarter to five. And the, one of the reasons is it's quiet and there's no other people right there around. I love my wife, of course, and we get together on, on other things. But it's just I need to focus on one thing. And, and, and often, even in that process, I get you know, mistaken. You'll go, oh, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this. But God is teaching me that there's nothing more important than him in his presence. And, and, and so, you know, I enter his presence. I, I said, at the top, I said, I thank you, Yahweh, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for the wonderful privilege of coming into your presence. And, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all there. Through the cross on which Jesus suffered and died, through the blood which Jesus shed on the cross, through his statement, it is finished, which Jesus proclaimed from the cross, through the temple curtain, which was torn in two when Jesus died at the cross, through the surrender of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, and the forgiveness of my sins at the cross, I enter your presence, Yahweh, humbly, respectfully, and joyfully. And it takes me 45 minutes to an hour. It's a 20... 20 pages that, the God has, that God has given me there. And, I, and it's been a while that, that I've had it. I gave copies to all, all, uh, my sisters, uh, <laughs> and I think they use it, and of course, Denise. You know, and it's just like, sometimes I think, wow, well, I'm getting up awful early. And I'm thinking, this, you know, some, sometimes I try to do it a little later, you know, but it's just, it's just, you get disturbed. There's other things going on, you know, and it's like, we need to be alone with God sometime, you know, just with him, you know, and just give him ourselves. And, and you know, and it's like, you know, I, it, it's, it's, a, it's just a, a thing that God wants us to, God loves, you know, we, he is our heavenly father. We are his children. Do you love to get together with your children? 
we all do, don't we? I mean, it's like, you know, and, 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 but it's like, how many God is different than we are, isn't he? He's, you know, we're human, he's divine. But he loves us so much. He demonstrated his own love by sacrificing his son and all, everything else he does in our lives. And sometimes we just need to be alone with God and just ex- receive the blessings that, it, you know, to just be there and, and, and enjoy it. And, you know, and uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's important you know, as, as we talk uh, about the family worship, that that's kind of an it, it, part of a family worship. You know, we include God; He's our Father, and uh, and we just uh, it's so amazing. And and to me, I most of, a lot of the scriptures that I that that He's given me there, I probably wouldn't have picked out, but these are perfect. You know, I read it, and it's just. I feel so good, you know. I, I often get up at 4.30. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, it's just being with God, you know, and, and being with our families. And it's like, I can't overemphasize the, the, what, what the importance of us being alone with God is. And then being with our family with God is. I mean, there's, there's no more important person than God <laughs> anywhere. And he demonstrated his love for us in so many ways, of course, by Jesus' salvation. And, that, you know, and I, I have a, a lot of people in my life. I'm 80 years old, and so, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like all the people I've met, my relatives, most of them are gone, but, but all that. But it's like, it, it's a different thing to walk into the presence of God. You know, and, and I, I don't know how many Christians feel they can do that or need to do that. But I think it's, for me, it's been so helpful. And, and I know a lot of other people that it has been. We just need to take some time, sit down and talk to God. And we can do that through the, ugh, all that he did to make it possible for us to do that. So to me, I hope that what you got out of this is that you have a loving father who wants to come and see you. And I'm sure that any time you want to see him, he'll be there. Doesn't have to be 4.30 in the morning. (laughs) Maybe it's a little bit in the night or somewhere else. And, And start talking to God. And, and, and praying to God. It's part of my, my, one of part of that, I have a prayer list and I pray to God. You know, and it's like, it's just so, it, for me, it's just so satisfying to sit in the presence of God, knowing that hopefully one day in eternity we'll be with God all the time, like the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were. But we have the opportunity now to sit down in the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I pray that God will bless you all, set up a time, meet with him, and just know that he's, he loves you, and he's demonstrated his love for you. And he, he wants to have a, a personal relationship with us. And I hope that's true for all of you. Let's pray. Father, there are so many ways that you have communicated to us and who you are and and what you do for us and us. But one of the most important, Lord, is just spending time with you. Just, Just... being in your presence and talking with you and praying to you and listening to you and just 
knowing that that's what eternity is all going to be all about. But now, even now on the earth, we have the privilege of coming into your presence, the wonderful presence of God. Father, help us all to take advantage of that. Set, set whatever aside we need to. Come into your presence and enjoy the time there. In Jesus' name I pray. Too? No. Oh, okay. Well, thank, thank, thank you for leading us. <laughs> Thought we almost had him there. Please stand. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. That song was perfect. <laughs> it came up real good. Lord, we just uh, love you so much. And we know how much you love us in so many ways. And Father, we have to confess that we're not perfect. We're not divine. But you give us the reason and the multitude of things to, to get through it. And, and the most promising thing is to stay with you. Be with you. Be with Jesus. Be with the Holy Spirit. Follow you where you're leading and guiding us, Father. And we just ask that you just, I, I know you, you are aware to have time with all of us. 
at the same time. <laughs> and so it's no problem there for you. And just ask, Lord, that uh, we can come into your presence and we talk to you and enjoy things with you, even le listen to music with you. Give you praise and glory, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.